I grew up in Cuero, Texas, which is uh, it's a very small town of about 6,000 people. And uh, uh, the high school I attended uh, in this small town only had uh, went up to plain geometry. So in the early years as a student at uh, the University of Texas, I took uh, uh, trigonometry, analytical geometry, calculus, caught up, but eventually I ended up with uh, enough classes so that uh, I could have a major in math and got a master's degree in uh, 1962. Uh, and that's, uh, Texas was at that time really starting a numerical analysis program under Dr. David Young. It was, uh, so for a, my early part of my career after my PhD, I did a lot of theoretical work. Having computer time, computer cycles, was very difficult to come by and very costly. And so uh, when, in fact, I was in Houston uh, working, uh, doing some research, uh, even after I finished my uh, PhD, at Rice, I uh, would frequently uh, put boxes of punch cards on a bus to be sent to run to some of the uh, machines here at UT. Uh, we didn't have a lot of cycles. Uh, one, I mean, that was really uh, very uh, challenging with these punch cards and having batch jobs. And uh, it really, in terms of real computation, began when uh, uh, Cray Research gave me a lot of computer time and then I could really attempt to address problems of interest. This topic was on uh, Galerkin finite element methods for solving parabolic problems and uh, there had not been any results, optimal L2 estimates for this problem. And that may seem to be very theoretical, but it was really important for a lot of these flow problems, time-dependent problems. And in fact, for many years, it was the second most quoted paper in the College of Engineering at Rice University. It was the technique that I developed in that paper that was applicable to a whole collection of problems. Didn't matter whether it was Galerkin, it could have been collocation, it could have been finite differences. I really showed how one could actually obtain uh, error estimates, which are very important in terms of uh, being to believe your computational results. People had used finite difference methods for, that was the traditional, or pretty much the traditional way of doing methods, uh, mainly these what we call point-centered finite difference methods. Uh, there were two other approaches, namely people doing uh, cell type methods, but really the Galerkin was an approach that people felt that could handle a lot of the uh, problems like in miscible displacement or when you had sharp fronts, when you had heterogeneities uh, due to uh, variations in permeability and porosity. And so uh, the movement of this theory and trying to push the envelope to really work on more practical applications. Because in the early, really, and I guess in the uh, 70s, people were mainly solving two-dimensional problems and they had very coarse grids. And so wanting, being able to uh, do better approximations. They led to doing these finite element methods. And this Glurkin approximation that I referred to was really a beginning in trying to analyze uh, these types of applications. Recently, I've been working in hydraulic fracturing uh, and porous media and uh, BO systems 
And this is very complicated because you're having to look at the um, look the growth of these fractures and uh, and how do you connect fluid in the fracture and fluid in the reservoir. And so this allows us to work with shells that we never were able to work. The U.S. has tremendous amounts of uh, shale and uh, that could we could use for recovering energy. There are other very important uh, applications. Uh, for example, storms uh, in bays and estuaries. I, I've worked on the modeling of uh, Lake Pontchartrain and cleaning up uh, some of the environmental modeling aspects of that. Uh, I would also add uh, the area of uh, biomedical applications uh, and cancer research. Uh, all of these have a lot in common with doing subsurface modeling. I think the three real major accomplishments that I'm most proud of was being a founding member of the uh, activity group in computational geosciences. Uh, also being uh, one of the co-managing editors of computational geosciences, the journal. And then third would be, of course, my election to the National Academy of Engineering. That and also uh, the, the, uh, the election to or selection at uh, Colorado School of Mines. I mean, receiving an honorary doctorate is really uh, quite awesome. Though uh, I have others like the von Neumann Medal, too, was very, very uh, important to me. And I could also add that it was uh, with uh, great delight that uh, I received an honorary doctorate from the Technical University of Eindhoven. One little interesting story about the Eindhoven was, uh, trip was uh, friends of mine were so excited that I was going to get to meet the Queen and that this was a special year for the Technical University of Eindhoven, that at the state of Texas legislature passed a proclamation honoring Eindhoven, and also a flag that flew on the state capital of Texas was given to me to present to the rector of Eindhoven that, uh, that was signed and that in fact it had flown on the top of the capital at, in uh, Austin, Texas. The real challenge in training young researchers is that one, we in education, we tend to focus in a disciplinary setting. We tend uh, in many of the disciplines to be very, very focused on what the students have, what they have learned in their education. And then we throw them into an environment where you really need to be multidisciplinary. So I think certainly at the PhD level, doing having postdoc programs where the postdocs can go and go and work with a group where they do have multidisciplinary topics and being able to see what are the crossover uh, issues. Uh, that and having uh, students and young people see this really gives them a breadth that they would not find uh, if they're just working in their specific environment or a specific disciplinary environment. One uh, expression I tell uh, many of the postdocs that work for me, there's always someone around the corner, another room that can do it better. But we have to constantly be looking to see how can we improve. What, where, where can you really uh, come up with something that is different and unique, that makes you uh, valuable? When a certain opportunity presents itself that can you find exciting and, and can be interesting to what you, you may pursue in a career, take an opportunity, take a chance.
I feel that right now I'm doing the best research I've ever done in my life. And I'm as enthusiastic and curious as I was when I began my career. I have uh, visited all over the world, and yet I have lived in Texas. If you took a compass within 160 miles of where I was born, I grew up in this little town, Cuero, that I mentioned was at 6,000 people. Um, there was very little uh, direction on what would you be, what, what should one do with one's life other than perhaps to be a teacher or a nurse. And so uh, that's one of the things I have been very concerned about is that uh, young people in these small rural communities to know what are the opportunities what can women do that what are the that there are that science and engineering are very exciting career but never in my wildest dreams when i was growing up did i think that i would ever be a professor of engineering at the university of texas never never dreamed it whatsoever <laughs>